hello and welcome. So I found this video on a trading strategy from Data Trader covering an EMA in combination with the Williams Fractal Indicator as a breakout strategy and I thought it would be interesting to replicate or backtest this strategy in Python. In a nutshell, how do Williams Fractals work? I'm only covering top fractals here, but the logic is just vice versa for bottom fractals. So these red ones here are top fractals and the green ones here are bottom fractals. So in general, you have a certain time period defined. Standard is two, but DataTrader was using four time steps. And now you're just taking a look at a local maximum considering the previous four time steps and the subsequent four time steps. So let's take a look at one or two examples here. So consider this top fractal, the high of this candle is higher than the high of the previous four candles and is also higher than the high of the subsequent four candles. Same for this one here. The high of this candle is higher than the high of the previous four candles and also higher than the high of the subsequent four candles. Right? And the buying condition now is just when a candle is closing above the previous top fractal and also when the close is above the 200 time step exponential moving average. The stop loss then, somewhere here, is just the low of this entry candle and the profit target is simply 1.5 the distance between close and stop loss. All right. All right, so let's code that strategy. We need Y Finance to get asset prices in specific intraday prices as the shown strategy is supposed to work on intraday data. We also need pandas for data handling and NumPy for some conditional checkings. I'm also importing TA to just have an easier time calculating the 200 time steps exponential moving average. But first of all, we are pulling data using YF download and we are just starting with Tesla going back. Yeah, let's just take the end of November here. Unfortunately, we cannot go back this far using Y finance and we are starting with a 15 minute time frame. And with that, you are getting a data frame which you should be familiar with. All right. Now, first things first, we are just calculating the 200 day exponential moving average and making use of the TA library. Take a look at the trend functions and then take the EMA indicator, apply that on the close and define the window as 200 days. Yes, you are more right would be to take the adjusted close price, but as you saw, the adjusted close for this time window is the same as the close price because there were no capital actions and I just want to save some space and time and so I'm using the close price here. With that, we have calculated the 200 time steps exponential moving average on a 15 minute time frame. All right, and next we are calculating the Williams fractals. Therefore, I'm using a rolling max function, but I have to center it. And let me quickly explain you why I have to center the max function. So let's just take a look at the share of the data frame and consider the high column here. All right, if I'm rolling over that, take the high column here, rolling over that and let's just take three days. So previous day and subsequent day and take the maximum. I will get the max value at 10 o'clock. But let's take a look at where we have a max value. So if we are taking a look at the data frame now, you see that the max value is at 945, right? So we have to center the rolling function here. And now we see we're getting the actual max value at 945 where we actually have this max high value. All right. And this is what I'm working 
with when uh, defining the Williams fractal top now. I just check if my high value equals the rolling high value. And now what is the rolling window? As we said, we have four previous and four subsequent days. We have to work with nine days, right? We have a center at day five and we have four previous days and four subsequent days. So our rolling function is nine days with a center. Okay, so let's get rid of all that and let's just create a column here, top bool. And this is just outputting if my high is a maximum, then we are getting a true and else we are getting a false value. So we can use NumPy to achieve that. NumPy where we have our high column equals what we just did. So just rolling over nine days, set the center to true and take the max. And if that's the case, we want to have a true. If not, we want to have a false value. So let's take a look at what we are getting and understand why we are getting a true value. So let's consider this row here. We have a high here, 1200 something. And this is higher than the four previous days and also higher than the four subsequent days, right? So this is a local max here. And if we want to have a number for that, then the top fractal is just this number. So we can just set the high being equal to this rolling window. And then we have the top fractal number. So this is what we are doing in the next step now. So we can basically copy paste this, just get rid of the bool and just take the number of the top fractal. And this is just the same as this. And instead of getting a true value, we are just taking the high value as set. And else we just wanna have a non output here. So again, let's take a look at the data frame. So you see now, or take a look at the head rather. Um, now you see for the true signal, we are just getting the high and now we can check if the close is crossing this value and then we are buying, right? So to see if the subsequent rows are above this value, we are just forward filling all those rows here, all right? And if we are getting a new value here, this value will change, but when we are doing the calculation later on, we are locking in this value for buy. So we are not getting into the danger of taking wrong uh, values here when this value is changing, right? But for now, we are just forward filling the value. So where we have none here, we are just getting this value. So let us forward fill those values by just reassigning this and forward fill it. So now you're getting the value subsequently here, right? Next up, we want to get rid of some NAN values. So I could have done that a bit more early here, but shouldn't make a big difference. So we're dropping the NAN values. And now we are defining our buying condition. So we are creating a column here, buy. And this is the case when first our close is above this William Fractal top column, right? And also as the yeah side condition, the close has to be above its own exponential moving average. And if that's the case, I want to have a one, else I want to have a zero. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at an example. So we are getting a buy signal here. And this is because the close is crossing above the fractal value here, right? 
And let's take a look at when this fractal is occurring the first time. This is here, right? Here's the change and we have the true value here. But we are not getting a buying signal because simply the close um, pr price is not crossing above the Williams fractal. And here it finally is. And yeah, this is why we're getting a buying signal here. All right. And now we just need the low of this row to calculate our stop loss and our target profit, which we are doing in the next step. So we need our stop loss. So we're using NumPy where and screen for the buy rows. And then we are just subtracting the distance between the close and the low price from the close price. And this is our stop loss. Right, so DF close minus DF low. And else we want to have a zero here. This is our stop loss and similar logic for the target profit. We are just adding the distance here and multiply it with 1.5 as data trader stated. Now we are getting to the profit calculation and my logic is um, looping over the whole data frame screen for the buy signals, append them to a list and from a certain buy signal, I'm looping and check if the close is either crossing the target profit or the stop loss and then append a selling date. All right. So first of all, for I in range over the whole data frame, then if I have a uh, buying signal, I want to just append it. And I'm taking the name, which is just the timestamp. And now I'm starting a loop over the rest of the data frame. So for J in range, I think the F minus I. And now I'm just checking, keeping the target profit of the buy row. So I'm just taking TP I log I, but now I'm looping over the subsequent rows and check if the close is crossing the target profit. And how can I do that? I can just simply use I log and then I plus J, right? So target profit stays the target profit from the buy uh, row, but the close is uh, going one row per iteration further, right? Or, and this is the stop loss logic. So same same procedure here. Uh, stop loss stays the stop loss from the buying row, and if this is larger than my close or the close, rather the close is smaller than that, my stop loss, I uh, want to append a selling date. So sells append, and then just take i log i plus j and then the name to get the timestamp all right so of course i need two empty lists here where i'm appending stuff so buys and sells two empty lists here and when i'm appending a selling date i want to break the loop right because when the close is crossing i will sell Right, so that I don't loop in the next row if, if the condition is already fulfilled. So I'm breaking the inner loop here. Right, and with that, we're getting two lists full of buying and selling dates. And I'm wrapping those in a data frame. The reason behind that is I want to get rid of multiple trades because right now I'm quickly showing you, I'm getting a lot of same buys right and i didn't even have had uh, the chance to sell them and i want to get rid of double trades or double positions here so i'm first of all wrapping this into a data frame buy sales i think this is quite inconvenient we can just transpose it now i have a buys and sells column here. 
I don't have net Celsius. So these are just positions which aren't closed yet. So I want to get rid of them with just dropping them. And now I have all my trades here. All right. So let's do some cosmetics here. Columns are buys and sells or sales rather, right? So now I have my dates, but I don't have my uh, profits of them here, right? But first of all, I wanna get rid of those um, double entries here. So for, for instance here, you see I'm ent entering a position 22nd here I'm selling at 23rd, but I'm opening another position on the 22nd again, and again, and again, and again. And to get rid of all those multiple positions, I'm defining actual trades. So I'm jumping over that real quickly because I've covered that in another video. Essentially, the exact same uh, problem, which I will link in the video description. So I'm using my buy columns and just check if it's larger than my shifted sales columns, by, column by one row. And with that, I'm getting my actual trades, which is just one trade, which seems to be not that much, but you have to see that these are just intraday data starting some days ago, right? All right, so I have my actual trades. Now let's do the profit calculation. So. I'm just screening my data frame for the dates and calculate the profit. As said, I've done the exact same thing in my other video, which I will link in the video description. So I'm screening my data frame for the, the, the cell uh, uh, dates, uh, take the close column and subtract the buy, uh, um, buy price date, not buy price, the buy, buying dates, close values, and then set that into relation to my buying dates, close values. So this is just a profit calculation. And with that, I'm getting a profit array of 3.6%, which is not that bad, to be honest. So let's see how Tesla was performing. But this is just one example, right? So that they could could be could be worse. So Tesla roughly roughly same same performance as with the strategy, but strategy actually outperformed the the stock here. But no investment advice or anything else. So you have to apply that to um, to a huge load of, of of assets and over a way longer time period here. So let's take another example here, Bitcoin. Some more trades as it seems. Wow, a lot more trades here. And <laughs> horrible, horrible trades seems to be, right? So what, what do we have here? Yeah, bad, very, very bad. But on the other hand, we have also a bad Bitcoin performance here, right? Anyhow, um, yeah, planning to use this as a bot. I think that could be interesting. So yeah, if you enjoyed it or found this strategy interesting, uh, give me a hint by, by commenting, liking, subscribing. And yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know what you would have made different and yeah, appreciate your support during this year and uh, looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye bye.